Uh, hello and welcome to this edition of our global webinar series. Today's webinar is titled High Temp Film Capacitors Meet the Challenges of Industrial and Automotive Applications. My name is David Adib and I am a senior technical marketing engineer here with Kemet based in Florida. And I will moder moderate the session for today. We're very pleased that you find time to join our webinar. Our presenter today is Evangelista Roni from the R&D department, a senior manager for the film business unit. With this information, I'll hand it over to you, Evangelista. Hello, and thank you for being with us today. Please tell us a little bit about yourself and then proceed with your presentation. Thank you. Hello, thanks, Levi. So I'm uh, Evangelista Boni, so I'm the technical, senior technical manager of uh, R&D film uh, activities based in Italy in Kemet. Today will be, uh, will be half an hour together in order to speak about uh, high temperature challenges in industrial and uh, automotive application. And we cover also the new development made by Kemet about the diesel power box and the resonant film capacitors. I'm, uh, I have a master science in degrees, uh, master science degree in electric engineering. In, uh, I'm graduated in 2000. Uh, later on, I stayed a little bit there in university, but uh, later I decided to have an industry experience. So I joined Arcotronics in 2000, the same year. 2007, Kemet has acquired Arcotronics, so there on, I, I'm part from Kemet. Um, I occupy several positions from in the technical services. So I started as a process engineer. Later on, I became a manager, technical process manager for some lines. And time by time, I increased my number of lines under my responsibility. And uh, 2015, I became uh, definitely an R&D manager. And now I'm the R&D global technical coordinator for all the R&D film activities for product inside Camel. So here we can start, uh, I mean, we start always when we, uh, when we start a new development, a new, a new R&D activity, we start always trying to understand what the, car, what the customer needs. So what is the requirement of the market? What is our estimation of the future need? Later on, we speak about the, what are the failure mechanisms of the current Kemet film series working at high temperature and uh, we we'll see also together what are the solutions adopted by Kemet in order to develop such a new series meeting the high temperature demand of the market. So we presented this new series. So we presented the resonant link capacitor, the power box distilling capacitors, and also we show you some performances and also some comparison with the current standard series. At the end, we'll try to uh, summarize the benefit of this uh, new series versus uh, the, the new requirements that are not completely addressed by the current standard series. And later on, we can give you some anticipation about the new releases, the next coming of this calendar here, about high temperature and the next, uh, at the beginning of the next year. So uh, when we speak about high temperature at the beginning, we focus our attention on the new wideband gap semiconductor technology and about the automotive market. Not because the other markets are not requiring the um, high temperature, also the others are requiring. But I mean, at the beginning, uh, these, uh, uh, these wind band gap semiconductors and automotive markets have started to require, uh, to make a lot of requirement in this direction. So, uh, so focusing on these technology market, we can see that uh, uh, they're requiring higher voltage. So also the automotive market before it was something like set 450 volt bus. Now there is also the high standard volt bus, but considering component at component level, we have also the requirement uh, to, to have a capacitor 1000 volt and even more. But there is also considering also the wind band gap, there is also the requirement uh, to have higher power density. There is a requirement to have a compact size and to work at higher temperature and higher frequency. So this input are something like the input that have been taken by the Kemet roadmap in order to develop the new generation of series. So that's the reason because we are here to speak about a new series with high temperature, with a longer, with higher reliability, a standard life, 
and also all this new series as something like uh, harsh environment capability in order to increase the lifetime and to not uh, be sensitive to the humidity. Of course, considering the higher frequency for the lower ESL and the miniaturization are something like a key point in order to uh, target the, the following market as uh, energy automotive that are growing uh, exponentially, but also the new generation of power electronics, uh, new industrial system, and of course, uh, to target also the consumer. However, what is something like common is uh, to have uh, the fact that uh, high temperature, high voltage, high current are something like required at the same time. And this is became, it became something like uh, our main trend for our new development. Here we can go a little bit in details about uh, uh, technology of silicon carbide and nitrogen gallium versus the standard silicon. You can see the Pentagon on the on the right uh, with the different vertices where we can where we can see uh, there is the high these new devices uh, are able to work at higher electric field they are uh, able to work uh, with higher thermal conductivity with higher melting point uh, higher electron velocity and high energy gap and this means that this new wind band gap system requires can work a tire switch frequency can work a tire electric field, are more, are more compact, and they can work also tire power and temperature. And these something like are the input to, to address the new requirement of the capacitor that need to, to have an higher resonant frequency. Uh, for power, for DC link application, also they need to have a lower range of capacitance. They need to be uh, smaller, lighter, working tire te operating temperature improve the thermal management of the uh, also component level and the required higher current per microfarad. So at the end, uh, this new development made by Kemet and something like a meet the several requirement together. So starting from the high temperature, they are able also to work for longer lifetime in harsh environment condition in order to not reduce the lifetime in humidity condition. And they can work with uh, higher ripple currents or higher power density. About the miniaturization level, we can say that they are no smaller, this capacitor, I mean, in terms of size. But if you, if you are considering that uh, these capacitors uh, uh, have a lower berating voltage and they can work at higher temperature and um, can work also for longer lifetime, at the end, the solution provided to the customer is smaller. All right, so Evangelista, let's. Uh... Uh, do our first poll question for today. So our audience should be able to see a poll question popping up on their screen any minute now. And okay. I'll give it a second here for the answers to trickle through. Now the question says, my biggest design challenge is, and there are several options. There is life, voltage, ripple current, size, temperature. And as the answers are coming through, Evangelista, let me ask you, what, what is your guess? What, what do you think is going to be the best uh, design challenge for our audience today? I mean, I think that uh, the, the, the new series that we are proposing are really meeting this demand and this, uh, this answer from the audience. Okay. So it's looking like... Uh, it's a tie between size and temperature. Yeah, high temperature, but also higher ripple current. The life is important, but they need also to be compact. And, yeah. a, and the higher temperature provide, um, provide a solution to be more compact, to provide a higher ripple current. So I think we are meeting these requirements. Yeah, so okay. it, the numbers are settled here. Temperature uh, got 33% of the answers. Size comes in uh, as number two, 26% of the answers. And then ripple current and life both received 20% of the answers. Okay. I tune the, the presentation accordingly, yeah. yeah. Here we can see, uh, I, we think that uh, from current point of view, the, I think the most important part of this presentation is uh, what are the main failure mode mechanisms of the current MS series working high temperature. Uh, 
One, two years ago, it was thought that the decreasing of the performance of the polypropylene film, that is the main film used in the resonant and the power box, the serine capacitor, was the main cause to explain the not good endurance test at 125 degrees of the current series. But at the end, thanks to a um, deep analysis made by Kemet on the root causes, there's something like individuated that the real root causes can be a little different, can be addressed. And for this reason, we were able to develop such new series. Here we can see what are the main four failure mechanisms. So we can start from the film shrinkage. The film is uh, on, the, on the left. The, fi the film is plastic, and the plastic, when it's submitted to the temperature, it shrinks. Uh, the plastic at the beginning of this process is something like stretch in uh, um, transversal direction, longitudinal direction. And uh, when uh, it receives a temperature, it's submitted to the temperature, the film tends to come to the origin uh, thickness. So it shrinks, uh, reducing the area and increasing the thickness, and therefore causing a capacitor slightly capacitor drop. Later on, the second point uh, is uh, self-filling of the capacitor. Self-filling is a well-known uh, property of the film capacitor that together to, with the flexibility of the film makes the true secret of the high reliability of the film capacitor. Uh, we can say that uh, each event of self-filling is not meaningful for the capacitor drop, but of course, considering the increasing of the high temperature can increase the number of events you also about his uh, um, high temperature working, high temperature working, and this should be, of course, uh, taken into account during the design. Later on, we can see that the third failure mechanism, the most important one, we think, that is due to the corrosion oxidation that can happen at high temperature, consider also some uh, water content inside the, the capacitor. You know, it's possible to see on the left uh, the, the building film beforehand using. And at the end, uh, what is the situation after endurance test 125 degrees on standard series? So it's possible to see that the, the, the metal is tuned to oxide. And for this reason, capacitor is possible to observe a capacitor drop, but also dissipation factor increase. Lastly, the, uh, at the fourth point, we can consider also the insulation resistance drop that can happen with the contemporaneous presence of voltage and temperature. Here we can see, um, just one moment. One moment that we block the cursor. I can see your cursor. Uh, yes, that you cannot like... go. Uh, something that I don't know what happened. Okay, here we can see in details the different, uh, uh, the different, uh, the details of the different failure mechanism. Here we have the shrinkage. So on the left, we can have something like a, a sheet that can be an A4 format of a film, a building film. And later on, we can see that on the right, that after the submitting the temperature, the film shrinks. And so we can see the area, the reduction of the area. Uh, during the film shrinkage, it can happen. Uh, to affect uh, um, at the same time. One is the capacitor reduction for the reason that we've already explained. The other is uh, the increase in the self-feeling event for the micro movement of the film. Um, the solution adopted by Kemet was to work uh, deeply on the thermal treatment of the capacitor in order to freeze as much as possible the, the, the mechanical movement of the film with the temperature in order to avoid the, to have uh, Further shrinkage during the working conditions. Here is possible to see the self-filling phenomena of the capacitor. Self-filling is a really well-known phenomenon inside the film capacitor industry. Here we can see a film layer, we can see with point and later on with the voltage, we can have a clearing. With the clearing, we can have a very high energy that can be high temperature, and therefore we can have the sublimation of the film and therefore the evaporation of the film metal. In this picture, it's possible to see that uh, in the black, we have steel metal, but in the gray area, we have the metal that is evaporized. So the, the condition of the film are retrieved. 
is uh, effective behavior of the self-feeling is strongly dependent on the base film material that is used. Here we can see something like a, um, a graph with some bars, and the bars indicate the relation between the carbon, the number of atoms of the this film dielectric with the carbon and the divided by the number of atoms of hydrogen and oxygen. And we can see that lower it is numbers, it's possible to have it, um, something like uh, um, lower is the number, better it is the characteristic for the cell feeling. This, for the chemical point of view, of course, is not the only reason for the good cell feeling, but this is something like uh, um, a good, uh, I mean, it's an important variable. The other variable that are something like important also, and they've been considered by the chemical design is a selection of course the right metallization thickness and the proper par process parameters in order to find the right compromise between the compactness and the good self feeling of the capacitor. Here we can see the, the most uh, important part uh, for uh, the fact that the standard series can fail at uh, working tight temperature. So it was possible to see what uh, how it looks a virgin film. And here we can see something like a capacitor that has been unwanted after an endurance test performed 125 degrees on a standard capacitor. It's possible to see that uh, it is a very transparent, a very lighter part, our part when the oxide or when the metal is tuned to oxide. We can have some general uh, oxidation, or we can have also some specific oxidized area, as it is a small part. So the oxidation has been reduced through, I mean, a proper study of the enclosure material. Uh, so we speak about box, we speak about resin, but it's also important to, to optimize the um, para process parameters in order to obtain the right compactness level of the internal film level. Here is possible to see also the insulation resistance behavior uh, versus the temperature. So here we have the insulation resistance and here we have the temperature in the axis. In, um, so it's possible to see that all the lines are decreasing, so the insulation resistance are decreasing versus the temperature. Of course, uh, in uh, increasing the voltage, it's possible to see that the lines uh, are showing a lower insulation resistance. In a straight line, it's possible to see, um, I mean, in the green, uh, the green and the dark and green are showing the insulation resistance of a new film called the high temperature dielectric film, HDPF, that is showing something like 10 times more or less, uh, more than 10 times the insulation resistance with respect to the standard polypropylene film. I think it's a great achievement and that uh, per permitted to, to have also power box with ceiling capacitor to work at 125 degrees at higher temperature at higher voltages and also to work up to 135 degrees. Otherwise, with the standard polypropylene, it was not possible. Here, possibly, here we can summarize what are the actions adopted by Kemet in order to have this capacitor this series at higher temperature. We can say that um, for, uh, uh, for the series that are using polypropylene, we have uh, used uh, uh, high grade, high grade polypropylene up to 125 degrees. But for the power bulb is a link uh, up to 135 degrees, we have used uh, a new film that is called high temperature electric film. About the metallization, also special metallization for thermal and humidity withstanding has been adopted. But also from process point of view, uh, also the, especially the parameter from the winding compactness of thermal treatment has been adopted. Also, last, not but, last but not least, is also um, the, the chemist has also studied uh, the special enclosure considering the, the proper box material and the proper resin for this new, um, for this new series. So All right, so our second poll question for today. Yeah. Um, here it is, it should be appearing on your screens anytime. I mostly use film caps in DC link, filtering, resonant cap, a combination of some of the above. So let's see what our audience thinks. Evangelista, do you have any guesses? 
is uh, this link. Okay, let's see. Yes. In the meantime, I have a question for you, um, Evangelista, if it's okay. That kind of yes, popped in. Yes, okay. Um, I know maybe you'll cover it a little bit um, in, you know, in the future slides, but uh, I know of the recent um, launch of the C4AK, and I was wondering uh, what type of capacitor um, is used or what type of film is, is used in, in the uh, C4AK uh, capacitor? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, yes, it is a new C4AK. It's not uh, really 100% of polypropylene, but it's mainly polypropylene with the, the adding of several additives in order to increase the thermal stability, to increase the insulation resistance uh, of uh, such film working up to especially 125 degrees and up to 175 degrees. Okay. Um, so, all right. So the poll has ended and option four, a combination of some of the above received most of the answers um, with uh, number three, the DC link, or uh, excuse me, number two, 33% uh, is the DC link. Kind of like what you expected basically. Yeah, of course, most of the are uh, using the uh, yeah, series maybe for most for this and filtering. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Here we can see uh, what is the current uh, current portfolio high temperature. So we have the new series that are uh, with the green box. Uh, I mean, we have the R seventy five H, R seventy six H for uh, uh, resonant. They are also called this link at high current. Uh, but they can be used also as a resonant as a number capacitor. Uh, later on, we have the power box capacitor, C4AQP and C4AK. So the first generation of the, the product in Kemet was uh, um, set as um, to work up one, one or five degrees. Later on, uh, Kemet has uh, um, come out with some uh, c capacitor increasing the temperature up to 125 degrees. But at the end, the second generation of the capacitor can be considered uh, like a C4AK that can work up to 135 degrees with a slightly different dielectric film that can permit to work a very high voltage up to 125 degrees, but to work up to 135 degrees. Here's a, is an overview of the new R75H. This is a uh, uh, DC link at high current, can be also used as a resonance number, as we said before, can work up to 125 degrees. The main characteristic of this capacitor is that uh, can work at 2,000 towers, 125 degrees, uh, up to 6,000 towers at 110 degrees, and more than 200,000 towers at 85 degrees. This is not the first to market product, but there are some characteristics that can be considered first to market. So, in fact, uh, it has the THB withstanding 85 85 either in DC and in the C rated voltage. So the main technology drivers are the high temperature, the ice environment, is a CQ200, is uh, good for, uh, is increasing the ease uh, ripple current, and it can also be considered a miniaturized product. It can work in different uh, segments in automotive, in energy, industrial, light drives, uh, consumer electronics. And this is something like a typical circuit you can see in the bottom of the right of where the R75H can be used. Later on, we can give also an overview by, uh, about on the R76H, the new R76H. And uh, this is uh, similar to the R75H is a double metallization construction instead of single metallized. So in terms of capacitance is a little reduced. Uh, so it's a little less effective, but it can bring more current. It can work up to 125 degrees. It's a little bit more stable at 125 degrees. So can we stand up to 3000 hours? But it has, uh, can we stand also 6000 hours, 110 degrees and 200,000 hours at 85 degrees. And also in this case, at the R75H, it has also some characteristics to the market due to the fact that can withstand 85, 85, 1000 towers either in DC and in AC. So the technology drivers also of this uh, series are something like similar to the R75H. 
Well, one point that uh, one news that also this uh, uh, capacitor is also proposed in the new wireless power transfer system because thanks to very excellent uh, repo current system. Here we can underline some performances of uh, R75H and R76H. On the left, we can see the capacitor deviation up to 1000 hours at 125 degrees performed at rated voltage. We can see that both, both series are quite stable. R76H is a little bit more stable due to the double metallization construction, but however, also R75H is quite stable. And uh, it is also seen, uh, is not uh, uh, shown here, but also one, one of five degrees uh, is both series are more stable than more than 3000 hours. So that a great achievement. Here is possible also to see in a C at 125 degrees, similar characteristic as a shelf in the C. This uh, is possible to see another important characteristic. So this uh, temperature that I use, the night temperature, are not important only to work at higher temperature, but can work also in the, at the same temperature the current series, but with uh, higher ripple current, with higher power density. And that's uh, a great example. R76 age, for instance, can work up to 40% of the current whereas in the standard R76. And we have uh, for high capacitance value, the R75 age, it can is uh, really, it has higher uh, ripple current than the standard R76. It's possible to see in this, uh, uh, in this graph when it's plotted the, the, the ripple current uh, at the different uh, frequency level. Later on, we can speak about this ceiling capacitor. We can speak about the different uh, markets that use this ceiling capacitor. We can speak that it can be used in windmills, it can be used in the solar, it can be used in the new generation of motor drives, uh, and so on. It can be used also in uh, this wireless power transfer. Here uh, we have an overview of the new C4 EQP. C4 EQP, the, the P stands for performances. So something like is increased. It has increased performances compared to the standard C32 due to the fact that this series can work up to 4,000 hours at 125 degrees at 100 volt per micro. So that means that is 0 0.6 uh, rated voltage. Is the ACQ200. It has uh, the highest humidity capability of 1695, 1,000 hours, but also 8585, uh, not rated voltage, 0 0.65, but 1,000 hours. The main technology driver also for this capacitor is the, the lifetime, the, the temperature, the CP200, the power density in the Oswash environment. But this is one circuit, main circuit where this series can be used. And this is a typical uh, circuit of onboard charger, for instance. One impo important point of this series that is not fair to the market, but there are some characteristics fair to the market. In this case, this series can can work 4,000 hours, 125 degrees without any derating at lower voltages. So there is not any derating or any decrease in the voltage at lower temperature versus the standard C32 series. And this is a really great achievement of the uh, development of this chemical series. Here we can have the, the, the new outstanding c k product, the new DC link. Very special to this first market. This is a capacitor that is, um, is can work up to 135 degrees, can work uh, uh, at 4,000 hours, up to 125 degrees, up to one, 145 volt per micron. So it's really a great achievement. The resident volts are current are 700 to 900 volts. And uh, at 135 degrees, we can have a lifetime of 1,000 hours at 0 0.56 rated voltage. Uh, but the lifetime of 125 degrees, 0 0.6, is up to 15,000 hours. And it's also a capacitor that is able to withstand 85, 85, 1,000 hours rated voltage, of course. Um, this is a serious, uh, another important point that uh, we'll have also the low profile available in the fourth quarter of this calendar year 2021. And this is here we have something like uh, some uh, typical circuit where this uh, capacitor is currently proposed 
as a letter compressor and traction inverter. All right, Evangelista. So uh, let's do our third and final poll question for the day. Uh, the technology driver that will lead future applications is ESL reduction, size, improvement in the mounting system with some options there, or modular uh, concept. So uh, let's see what answers we get from our listening audience. It is consistently size, followed by modular uh, concept. So mostly size about uh, 50 or 60% of the answers so far. Yeah, it makes sense. All right. Okay. Thank you. Here it's possible to see the directing voltage, the comparison of the directing voltage, super ATP, super AK. So we can, here we have the voltage and it is a graph and we have the temperature. And we can see that the user the, the, the rating of the voltage versus the temperature. But it's possible to see that the C4K has lower the rating compared to the c 4 And another important um, characteristic, the fact that we can compare the fact that uh, if we take a C4K at 700 volt and we compare the c 4 at 900 volt, so, C4K 900 volt is the same dimension as C4K 900 volt. Of course, C4K 700 volt is smaller than C4K 900 volt. And we can see here that 125 degrees in C4K can work at a higher voltage, C4K 700 volt, than C4K 700 volt. And this is a, a great example of, uh, uh, of uh, miniaturization due to the lower direction of the volt. Here it's possible to see another important characteristic. Uh, here we have the capacitor deviation and in endurance test performed to 125 degrees. Uh, it's possible to see in yellow the behavior of the standard series C4Q. C4Q can work at 125 degrees for 200 hours. Uh, but later on, it, it's possible to see that there is a very huge capacitor drop. Instead, the c 3 qp in blue is possible to see that up to 3,000 hours is really stable at 125 degrees at the same board. But if we give a look at on the c 4 k it's much more stable. And c 4 k I can highlight that is even performed in Euro test at higher voltage. So a 1.1 already bought instead of 0 0.7. On the right, it's possible to see also the, the really stable performance of the c 4 k at 135 degrees, 0 to 7 rated voltage. And here we can see what we already seen for the resonant capacitor. So we can see that uh, this, uh, this series, new series that can work at higher temperature, they can offer also the possibility to work at higher ripple current for, uh, at higher temperature. In this case, it's possible to make a compared to 105 degrees. Where C4 AQP can work uh, at, uh, can have a current that is 11 times than the standard C4 AQ, and C4 AQ is something like 18% higher C4 AQP and 12 times higher than the standard C4 AQ. And this is another example of, uh, of power density of the fact that this new series meet also the power density requirement. But also the lifetime is really important. So on the left, we have the lifetime comparison. We have uh, uh, here, we have the lifetime uh, time uh, expectancy in hour. So here we have one 100,000 hours and here more than 200,000 hours. In uh, the straight line, we have the c 4 qp uh, life cures compared to the c 4 q that is in dotted line. So the different colors refer to the different temperatures. For instance, we can make some comparison at 125 degrees, where we can see that C4EQP moved from the 200 hours of C4EQ to 4,000 hours of C4EQP at 0 0.6 rated voltage. On the right, we can see the similar graph, but making a comparison of the C4EQ versus the C4EQP. And then we can see that 
on lower temperature, the lifetime has the same. So at 70 degrees and 85 degrees, the lifetime has the same. But at, at higher um, temperature, the lifetime of C4K is uh, much higher. And we can make an example of 125 degrees where the C4AQP was 4,000 power. C4AQP is the same voltage, 0 to 6, uh, is moved to 15,000 power. But uh, so, and, and also we have uh, 1,000 towers at uh, uh, 0 0.55 uh, volt. So at the end, we can something like uh, summarize the benefit of these new series. These new series are really capable to work at high temperature. C4K can work up to 135 degrees. And also the others, R75H and 76 and C4QP can have a long life working at 125 degrees. But uh, these, uh, uh, these characteristic to work uh, at high, uh, high temperature means also that uh, T series are more stable at lower temperature. So also one, one of five degrees to T series are really stable for a lifetime more than 3000 hours and uh, high voltage level. But what is important also the power density. So they can work at higher ripple current. They can show higher ripple current distending. So we, we said that 76 H is more or less 40% higher than the standard of 76. C4K, C4QP can work uh, up to 11 times, 12 times as the standard c 4 And the last time we have already spoken in the previous, uh, in the previous uh, slide that we have a really great achievement, especially at higher temperature. But what is important is also the high stability in the harsh environment. So these uh, uh, series are also stable in a very harsh environment uh, situation. So they are 75 H, are 76 H, are capable of 85, 85 rated voltage, 1000 towers. C4QP at 60, 95, 1000 towers. C4K also 85, 85, 1000 towers. At the end, we can also show, we can also anticipate to you what the next coming is from chemist side at high temperature. So in the fourth quarter 2021, we'll have the uh, low profile availability, but we'll have also the voltage extension on, on the c 4 k So we decrease the voltage. So now we have 700 volt, 900 volt. We are expecting to, the, to have also lower voltage range, but also higher voltage range up to 1000 and even more. But in the next coming year, we'll have also the new R76K that is in next, is a step forward from the R76H that uh, where we are something like expecting to have a uh, double of the current uh, with respect to the R76H. So this is another um, step forward in order to meet the demand of uh, to have a capacitor that can uh, withstand the tight temperature or uh, can work uh, at a high current at high temperature. Okay, that's all from my side. Thank you very much for your attention, for your time. Thank you, Evangelista. Uh, okay, so let's see here. We have received one question from the audience that says, what are the box and risen materials for these new series? Okay, um, about box, uh, we have the r uh, On the r 75 h r 76 h and C4EQP, we have um, PBT. PBT box with glass fiber, and uh, we are using uh, epoxy resin. On C4K, we have uh, this uh, same epoxy resin, but uh, we have uh, also a PPS material, especially in order to meet the demanding of uh, 85, 85 uh, uh, THB withstanding rated voltage. All right. Uh, thank you for that. Um... There is also one more question that just came through that says, what is the maximum self-heating temperature of these new series? Maximum self-heating. Yeah, that's, that's a great question. I mean, the, uh, all the design of these uh, capacities have been made in order to have a good self-heating in all the range of working of these series. So, uh, so this year can work, uh, I mean, the series that are rated up to 125, they can show self-filling up to 125, but also C4K can show self-filling up to 135 degrees. I mean, the self-filling is working in the old range, temperature range of the capacity. 
All right. So with that said, I think uh, this is all what we have time for today. So thank you very much, Evangelista, for this presentation. Thank you to all of our listening audience for attending today. And until we see you next time, have a good day and goodbye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.